Hello there everyone, and welcome to the very first Majestic Masiakosaurus YouTube video. My name is Milo and I love science. Unfortunately, however, there's a lot of really bad science out there on YouTube as well, so that's what this channel is going to be aimed at. We're going to be taking a look at a lot of the worst science possible out there, and hopefully I'll be able to show you why you shouldn't believe everything that's on the internet. One of my favorite aspects of the scientific world is paleontology, which is the study of past extinct species of animals. The most famous, of course, would be the dinosaurs. So today we're going to be taking a look at the very first video which was uploaded on the YouTube channel Christians Against Dinosaurs. And let's be clear here, it's not the Christian part that necessarily bothers me. However, Against Dinosaurs caught my attention. I've seen a few videos on this channel, but I thought we'd just take a look at the very first and I'll tell you what I think along the way. Let's get started. Hello, Kristen again. Um, so for tonight's Ask an Admin, um, in the spirit, I wanted to do kind of a video Ask the Admin with questions that you've given me in both the thread that I was asking for them and in some private messages that some people sent as well. Um, so I guess we'll just jump right into it. Um, this one is from a gentleman named Owen. And Owen writes, can you go more into, we had the concept of a dinosaur before the fossils were found. Where did the concept come from? Where did the concept come from? Uh, the fossils. And that's a great question. And it stems from the argument that the dinosaur bones that are found all over the place um, they create dinosaurs. All right, so let's be clear. The fossils don't create dinosaurs. Fossils are the remnants of dinosaurs or any other prehistoric creatures' bones, so we can use their fossils to get a better idea of what they looked like. But the fossils don't create dinosaurs, exactly. And the dinosaur concept, the visual aspect of the dinosaur, how they were going to look, um, what they were going to be made out of, how tall they were going to be, how much they were going to weigh. That was all decided in a very long talk by um, a gentleman by the name of Sir Richard Owen back in 1842. False. Well, I will give you that it was quite a long talk. I believe about two and a half hours, actually. He did coin the word dinosaur, but the assertion that he decided that everything about what they were going to look like is blatantly false. For example, his original dinosaur body plan had all dinosaurs walking on four legs, them being quadrupeds. However, we now know that one of the main characteristics of a group of the dinosaurs called the theropods, that includes T-Rex, all birds, and Megalosaurus, which was one of the dinosaurs Owen was describing, actually were bipedal, walked on two legs. Of course, this wasn't even hypothesized until many years later by the scientist Joseph Leidy in New Jersey. Furthermore, though I haven't read the entire 144-page transcript of Owen's lengthy speech, I have a hard time imagining that he would have guessed many dinosaurs had feathers, which we now have extensive fossil evidence to show to be true. Anyway, the point is Owen didn't have a lot of fossil evidence to work with, so many of his ideas were fantastic starts to the world of paleontology and the study of dinosaurs in particular, but it would take many, many further fossil discoveries in later years to disprove or expand upon some of his earlier ideas. So no, the entire concept of a dinosaur was absolutely not laid out all the way back in 1842. So, sounds all well and good, right? No, except in the first actual dinosaur bones and the first actual fossils weren't discovered until 1854 by Ferdinand Vandeveer Hayden in Missouri. Wrong again. In Sir Richard Owen's original talk, he was already describing three distinct dinosaur genera, Megalosaurus, Iguanodon, and Hylaeosaurus. Megalosaurus was the first and was first discovered and named in 1824 by William Buckland, almost 20 years before Sir Richard Owen coined the word dinosaur to describe it. Then in 1854, about a decade after Sir Richard Owen's speech, Ferdinand Hayden discovered the first dinosaur fossils in America, but certainly not the first dinosaur fossils at all. Just do a few Google searches and you'll find that what you're saying is just historically incorrect. 
One last thing I'd like to bring up regards another YouTube video on Aaron Ra's YouTube channel, in which he did a long discussion with this same lady, the host of Christians Against Dinosaurs. While I love Aaron's channel, I don't think this was one of his best videos, and I'm not convinced the discussion was particularly productive. Anyway, one of the things that she kept asking once this topic was brought up was, but when was the first full dinosaur discovered? And I think the problem here is that she's confusing partial skeletons with complete skeletons. In fact, we can often deduce a new species, or at least a basic body plan for a new species, based on only a partial skeleton. So even though most of the original skeletons discovered back in the days of Richard Owen were not complete skeletons, this does in no way disregard their authenticity. Sure, we'd always prefer to find as complete a skeleton as is possible, but that's simply not always the case, and we'll make do with what we can find. Indeed, often a full skeleton isn't even necessary to form a really good idea of what a particular species might have looked like, simply based on the fossils we do have, and comparing those with both species alive and extinct. So now you have a concept before you actually have any of the fossils to go along with it. So did the concept drive the fossils or did the fossils drive the concept? If you're asking me, I'm going to say that the concept drove the fossils into what they should look like. Okay, just to sum this up, the first official dinosaur discoveries were found in 1824 in England, 18 years before Sir Richard Owen gave that lengthy speech describing them, and almost 30 years before Hayden was to find the first dinosaurs in America. But even aside from this point, people have been finding fossils for hundreds of years without them being formally described by science. That's one of the main reasons we have so many legends of giants and dragons, because people had been long discovering fossils of huge bones and had no idea what to make of them for hundreds of years. It was only until the 19th century that scientists finally began to formally study these fossils and come to understand what amazing creatures once inhabited our planet. But no, the fossils came first. Um, so that's it for that question. Oh boy, that was only the first question. <laughs> this one is from Robin, and um, she writes, Even though dinosaurs aren't real, which one is your favorite? It's a great question. Um, so my favorite is going to be the brontosaurus. And the reason it is the brontosaurus is because it's one of the more well-known dinosaurs. You can go to any little kid, any person, and say brontosaurus, and they know what you're talking about. Or they think they do. Um, but it, it, it never existed. Um, so I like to say that the brontosaurus is my favorite because it's a little more fake than all the other ones. Okay, so just something kind of funny I'd like to point out here real quick. For the past, oh, I don't know how many, many years, scientists had rejected the brontosaurus as being its own legitimate genus, believing it was too similar to another dinosaur called Apatosaurus to be considered its own separate animal. So I suppose it actually sort of was a more fake than the other dinosaurs because its name actually did not represent a valid genus. Turns out this has actually also been questioned fairly recently, and I believe brontosaurus is actually finally back in becoming its own unique genus once again. Anyway, I'm not actually sure exactly how far the study's gone, so if you know more about it than I do, then please leave it in the comments. I'm very curious. Anyway, I just thought this was a little bit funny, and if this lady had done any research at all, I feel like she probably would have known this, but apparently not. Um, so our next question is from James. Um, this was another one in a private message. So um, James asks, what is your definition of bone? If you saw one in the ground, what would say to you that this is a bone from a huge creature? So I'm assuming he means fossils? Not the same as bone. Actually, you're right here. Fossils are not bones. Instead, they are the remains of bones that have been slowly replaced by rocks and other minerals under the ground for millions and millions of years until we have like an exact rock replica of what the bone used to look like. It is a bit more complicated than that, but perhaps I'll talk more about that in depth in a later video. Um, I'm sure that if an elephant dies, its bones are going to go in the ground. There's probably big bones in the ground that belong to larger animals. That happens. Um, as far as this claim of a dinosaur bone being in the ground, 
first of all, the fossil isn't a bone anyway. What it is is it's where bone used to be, but over the years it's been washed away and instead replaced with limestone and other natural stones that are found in the wild. So these fossils aren't actually bones anyway, they're just rocks that are placed inside of other rocks that are supposed to look like creatures. Okay, so kinda yes and kind of no. You're right that fossils are not actually bones, but you make fossilization sound like an absurd magical process. But think of it this way. Bones are organic material. They're not nearly as sturdy as rock. So if they're buried quickly enough and they remain in one piece, not ripped apart by predators or already decayed, the bones in the ground will start to decay under the ground and will slowly be replaced by rocks, minerals, or whatever else happens to be in that certain place where the bones were buried. And so they're not supposed to look like creatures. Like I said before, they're like replicas of the bones these creatures left behind and so represent very well what the animal would have looked like. Finally, paleontologists can tell the difference between fossils and normal rocks. For example, depending on where you are, fossils will often look a different shade or color than the rock which surrounds them. And fun fact, fossils will stick to your tongue when you lick them. So, very believable, right? Uh, yeah, it's actually not that hard to understand, but if it's not quite making sense to you, I encourage you to go do your own research and read about it a little bit more. It's quite interesting. It's not magic, it's science. Okay. So anyway, to answer the question, um, if I saw a large bone in the ground, I'd say, oh hey, an elephant died here a couple years ago. Next question. Um, this one is from Amy, and Amy writes, um, when did you first start to question the existence of dinosaurs? That's a great question. Um, so, I actually, when I was a young girl, I was at a character breakfast in our town. And there was Mickey Mouse and there was Daffy Duck and I don't know, all these other characters. And I was at the breakfast and I went to go use the little girl's room and one of the characters was in there changing. And I was like, so Minnie Mouse is actually this lady that I've seen around on the streets before in a costume? That's pretty awful. So at that point, I started questioning all of my surroundings. Actually, I'm totally okay with that. And I think it's very important to be skeptical of all your surroundings. That skepticism, in theory, should lead to diligent study, which would then result in a decision based on the available evidence and logical reasoning. The problem here is, a few Google searches and maybe 10 to 15 minutes of research was enough to prove everything you said here wrong. Your skepticism should not be resolved quickly with an answer based on insufficient evidence and or your own personal wishes. The problem here is that while watching Mickey Mouse change out of costume seems like fantastic evidence that that wasn't actually Mickey Mouse, it doesn't seem like you've spent much time looking into the abundant evidence for the existence of dinosaurs. Stay skeptical, but do your research. It wasn't until much later that I had the scientific knowledge. Pardon me, what scientific knowledge? To actually effectively understand that there wasn't such thing as dinosaurs. But that was the very beginning of it for me, you know, because that was when I had been indoctrinated to believe in dinosaurs. Whoa, okay, indoctrinate? Let's be clear, to indoctrinate is to quote, teach a person or group to accept a set of beliefs uncritically, meaning like without good evidence or much coherent reasoning behind that said set of beliefs. And paleontology being a passion of mine, having seen countless scientists working labs, the fossil evidence, modern day nature, geologic and biologic processes in favor of dinosaurs and millions of other creatures that lived millions of years ago and their evolution, etc. The evidence is abundant. Let's not call that indoctrination. And believe that the paleontologists um, were not lying scumbags. What? Lying scumbags? What? Okay, seriously, what motivation do you have to believe paleontologists to be lying scumbags? They certainly don't make that much money and they almost never received sufficient public recognition. In fact, most paleontologists I've ever met simply do it as a volunteer position. 
The only reason paleontologists and people like myself do the work we do is because we love it and we're genuinely interested in learning about the fantastic, amazing world around us and what it was like before us. Lying scump, <laughs> that's just ridiculous. And at that point, the naivete of me being a young girl, um, and I guess it's a beautiful thing, except you're supposed to grow out of that. And I think that that's where me and a lot of atheists and some other people of other faiths um, don't see eye to eye, is that they're still saying that dinosaurs are real and I don't know, maybe they still think that the boogeyman's real or any of these other fake things that we have as children that we're supposed to let go of. Okay, so first of all, I don't care what god you believe in or if you don't believe in one at all, this is about dinosaurs. There are plenty of religious people who believe in a higher power and evolution and dinosaurs. So frankly, I don't care about your religious views. Second, and more importantly, the difference between growing out of dinosaurs and the boogeyman is that there is absolutely no good evidence for the boogeyman whatsoever, and the evidence for dinosaurs is abundant, like I've already said. That's a huge false analogy. Yeah. So that's the end of my questions. Thank you all. Um, if you have any additional ones, please leave them. I will um, do another one of these in the near future and answer any other of your questions. Um, so have a good night. Oh, thank God. I'm almost done. <laughs> well, wasn't that fun, huh? And turns out that's only the first video on that YouTube channel, so it seems like I've got some work to do. Well, I hope you found that interesting or entertaining or perhaps just as frustrating as I did. But either way, if you did like the video, then uh, like it. That's, that's what you do. And consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, I know this is only the first video, but I plan on making more of these just to kill more of my weekends. Uh, by the way, you're also welcome to follow me on Instagram at mischievousmasyakosaurus if that's something you do. Uh, but again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you in a later one. Peace out.